Believe it or not, we know more about the surface of Mars than what happens under the surface of our oceans and lakes. We still have a lot to learn about our planet. Lake Superior, which is the world's largest freshwater lake by surface area, is filled with mysteries. Lake Superior is 616 kilometers or 383 miles long by 257 kilometers or 139 miles wide with a total surface area of 82,100 square kilometers or 31,700 square miles. Its maximum depth is 1,333 feet or 406 meters. Lake Superior is located in the northern part of the U.S. and shares a border with Canada. Just a few miles off the north coast of Isle Royale lies a strange volcano crater-like anomaly that seems to be out of place today in Lake Superior, and I found it on Google Maps. In fact, volcanism was very much active in the Lake Superior region over a billion years ago. Evidence can still be seen today from the black basalt shores of Isle Royale and also parts of Minnesota and Michigan. This area was part of the failed rift called the Mid-Continental Rift. So what is this strange anomaly? The strange structure is located about 4 miles or 6 kilometers north of the coast of Isle Royale at a depth of 500 feet or 150 meters. The structure is about 3 miles or 5 kilometers long and 2 miles or 3 kilometers wide. The height of the volcano-like structure is around 300 feet or 90 meters tall, with a slope of around 35 degrees. This diagram may show you what the structure looks like when looking from the side. So what is this structure? It is not a Google Maps fluke as it appears on other topographical maps. The structure does lie above an ancient fault, but volcanism ended over a billion years ago. This has been made recently in geological terms. However, any volcanic cones have long since eroded, making this structure more than likely not volcanic in origin. So we will rule out volcanism. I have actually found very little information on this anomaly on the internet. Was it formed by a meteor? Okay, around 12,000 years ago, the thick Laurentide ice sheet was receding in this area. Temperatures were warming, but it reversed and cooled for another thousand years. This was called the Younger Dryas event. It is possible that a comet exploded over Michigan causing fragments to penetrate the ice sheet to make the crater. However, no hard evidence has been found. Maybe it is a gas emission crater. In northern Russia, permafrost melting has caused major releases of methane in the form of explosions. These holes in northern Russia were created by methane explosions and there were quite a few of them found. But the Lake Superior anomaly is 3 miles long and as tall as a 35 story building. If that's the case, this would be the largest gas emission crater in the world. However, there has been no evidence of gas releases coming from the bottom of Lake Superior recently. Another explanation is that it may be a man-made structure. Well, the earliest people in the Lake Superior region dates to 11,000 years ago after the driest event and the retreating of the glaciers. It may have been possible that the lake level was much lower as the ice sheet retreated and the ancients may have built the structure. But this is unlikely. The structure is too large and would take centuries to complete with the technology back then. However, the most plausible explanation is that the structure was formed by the retreating glacier itself by rock deposit and water runoff. I actually witnessed this myself on a smaller scale when I lived in Greenland. When a glacier or ice sheet melts and retreats, it can form rivers of fast moving water on its surface. The meltwater starts out slowly and then carves into the ice. As more surface ice melts, it flows into the river, making the river stronger and more intense, and eventually it ends up at the terminus of the glacier. The water that flowed at the base of the glacier brought not only debris, but the extreme force removed the debris at the bottom of the waterfall, making a large depression as the debris is forced outward and settles a short distance away from the giant waterfall. Here you can see that same phenomena at the base of this waterfall. Note the crater-like depression formed by the force of the water pushing the debris outward, and it settles just a short distance away. On the north part of the structure, there is a slight indentation that may have been the location of the waterfall or runoff coming off the ice sheet. The ice sheet may have been about a mile and a half or about 2.5 kilometers thick in this area. So the water gushing into the structure would have been intense. The river would have been about a half mile wide and possibly the waterfall would have been over 2,000 feet or 600 meters tall. At the terminus of the ice cap, there is usually a cliff of ice and a gradual increase of elevation starting at the top of the cliff. A previous structure may have been on the southwest part of the crater blocking further expansion of the structure. I believe the best theory is that this crater-like structure was formed by a large amount of water runoff from a retreating ice cap that displaced large amounts of debris at the base of the runoff as well as additional carried debris and pushed it outward only to be deposited a distance 
away from the giant runoff. However, this is just a theory, and I think the best one. But, the Lake Superior Crater Anomaly still remains a mystery to this day.